NBA 2K20 tutorial number 43. Today we're going to talk about how to make it in the combine as a center, yes, in the 5 position. Now we will study in detail how to manage your advanced stats as a center to make it into the pool using the big man. So if you enjoy my tutorials and you would like to see more, make sure to click the link above or below for my all 2K20 tutorials playlist where you're going to find more tutorials to help you on your gameplay and also the rest of the combine tutorials so you can learn about everything in the combine that's going to help you make it into the 2k league all right so the key advanced stats for center are as such you need to have a really good differential between your ortg and drtg you got to keep your drtg extremely low and you need to have a high efg by only shooting twos now if you don't know any of those advanced stats terminology because you haven't been following the previous tutorials just click on the playlist watch the old ones and you'll be able to catch up you will need to watch all of them because the center position is the one where he does a little bit of everything so you need to know all of the details really so for all other positions in the combine a drtg lower than 120 really is amazing like especially the lockdowns i showed you guys earlier they were around 110 111 however the best c's in the combine were the only players and positions in the combine where their DRTG was in the double digits. Yes, under 100 points per 100 possessions they're involved in. The best centers in the combine allowed less than 100 points, 98 to 99. Like centers in the combine can actually have incredible defensive impact when they're playing it correctly and not chasing boards. And that's reflected in your DRTG. And if you want to stand out, that's the brand of ball you have to play. Like it's gonna stand out because your DRTG is tracked. So if you have an incredible DRTG, you're gonna stand out above everyone. So it's not about chasing boards, it's about playing perfect defense at all times. So in regards to the ORTG though, the pool centers all average around 150 to 160 per 100 possession scored. So without anyone standing out too much, like that number though, is still pretty high from an average point of view but these are all pool centers so these are the best of the best and the C's were able to generate a very high ORTG because they were always readily available to grab the offensive boards and set really good screens and slip at the right times. Combine is about what type of opportunities you get the most and then how well are you at dominating every time you get a chance. You can't just be good like you have to dominate the opposition every chance you get and the center is all about rebounds, steals, blocks, contesting shots, and all of that good stuff. So, it's un important that you understand like the center gets the most chances for offensive boards, defensive boards, steals, while playing hedge defense all the time because it's all pick and roll, and contesting shots by protecting the paint or stepping up to, you know, stop the free. Like, you want to make it into the pool as a C, you're going to need monster DRTG advanced stats. So now let's take a look at the two of the best center pool advanced stat lines from last year's combine for your reference so you understand like where you need to be or where you stand. Like these are the advanced stat lines from the top C pool talents from season two. So player A, we're looking at traditional stats of 12 points per game, seven and a half assists, 16 boards, one block, five steals, and one turnover. Irrelevant really because only advanced stats matter, but those are the traditional stats for your reference. The advanced stats, winning percentage of 80, usage rate of 16%, DRTG of 99.6, ORTG of 155, and an EFG of 70%. Player B, the greatest combine center and retain league player and all that, but he was the greatest combine center in the world from last year and these are his traditional stats. 19 points per game, 6.5 assists. 17 rebounds, 1 block, 3 steals, 2 turnovers. Advanced stats, the only thing that matters. Winning percentage of 86, usage rate of 23, ERTG of 98.8, and a ORTG of 153 while his EFG sits at 73%. So, this is a big deal. You have to look very closely. One thing that stands out fairly awkwardly that you don't expect from the center spot is the incredibly high amount of assists. Like player A has seven and a half, while player B has six and a half. And if you're wondering why, their assist number is actually correlated to their rebound numbers. This is because if you grab a defensive board, you have a chance to hit a person leaking out for an assist. So there is a chance of an assist there. And if you grab an offensive board, there's a chance where you kick it out for another person for an assist so that's another chance for an assist there 
So when you hear that, you'll be like, Sam, then I should be chasing rebounds and then kicking it out and try to get as many assists as I can after every rebound I get. No, that's not what you do. Let me explain. If you grab a defensive board on the defensive end, so that's one defensive rebound, but that also significantly increases your DRTG because that counts as an individual stop. So once you've grabbed the defensive rebound, you have really already done your part in terms of DRTG. And if your, in, if your next intention is to chase for a leak out assist, that's wrong. Because you're thinking, oh Sam, if I get an assist, uh, I lower my usage rate and at the same time my ORTG climbs. Yeah, but if you're throwing a bad leak out pass just to hit the guy that's closest to the rim, you might throw it out of bounds. That's a turnover. That's terrible. But if you make the right pass and then that guy makes another correct pass, your team's going to score anyways. And then even though you don't have an assist, it doesn't matter because your usage rate is still down. And then at the same time, your ORTG is going to climb because your team scored. And most importantly, you didn't force a bad pass, so there's really no chance at a turnover. Nothing in the combine is worse than a turnover. And you can tell from these two centers, even though the rebound numbers are incredibly high, and so are the assist numbers, these guys are pretty much mostly triple-double, maybe often. The turnovers are really low. Player A at 1 player B at 2. So these guys are not throwing bad leak out passes or bad kick out passes. So the same thing applies to kick outs. If you grab an offensive rebound, you don't just try to throw it to the corner and get a free so you can chase or a rebound and then an assist. You can't do that. Because if you get baited or you just throw a bad pass and it goes into a turnover, your ORTG is going to go down and your usage rate is going to go up. Nothing worse than that in the world. Like if you look at these two centers, their usage rates are relatively low. You can tell though, player B likes to attack probably off putbacks a lot more because you can see his usage rate is about 7% higher. He scores 7 points more per game. But as always, if you score more and your usage rate is higher, you can see player B has more turnovers. And relatively speaking, player B has twice the turnovers as player A. And would you, is the 7 points extra worth it? Yes. If it's every one turnover and you score 7 extra points, sure, but that's not really how it is. You gotta avoid turnovers at all times. And player B was the greatest player in the combine from the center spot, so... That's what you're kind of chasing after. Now, in terms of the EFG, you can tell both players are very similar. This is mostly because centers don't take frees. So your effective field goal percentage pretty much is going to end up being your field goal percentage. Now, they could use true shooting percentage as a calculation, but that just involves free throws. And in the combine, really, nobody gets free throws because the game is not built where you can draw fouls if you want to. Like... In real life, in the NBA, drawing fouls is a legit skill. But in 2K, any 2K, 2K League Combine, like you can't develop such a skill. You just because the game is very balanced in terms of fouls drawn. Like no player is gonna stand out like a James Harden in the Combine or 2K League, where they're just like shooting 400 free throws more than everybody else because they're so good at drawing fouls. That just isn't built into the game, and that skill is not yet developable in a 2K setting. So that's what it is. But you can see rebounds are correlated with assists. At the same time, your turnover is going to be low because these two centers are making very good passes out of every board. And you can make a good pass out of offensive board or defensive board. So for those thinking centers don't have you know, a lot of impact, wrong. Because every rebound is a chance to assist or is a chance to hockey assist. Then you're like, oh Sam, I should chase rebounds. No. You don't chase rebounds. If you have to step up to stop the free, or you have to show and then recover to stop the roll, that's what you do. You have to play good, sorry, you have to play perfect hedge defense. Because if you look at the steal numbers of these two centers, they are also extremely high. And these guys were getting their steals in the hedge, which means they were playing extremely good hedge defense where they were stopping the free. Because you can see that the RTG is incredibly low. Let me see, opposing team is not hitting that many frees. But at the same time, they're getting steals, which means they will show, let the defender recover, and then they will go back to that passing lane between Roman and Handler and likely tip the passes or get steals. Five steals a game for player A as a center is incredibly high. Even player B at three steals are incredibly high. And both of these guys had above 10% steal percentage, so they weren't spamming it either. So from the steals, you can tell these guys are also playing great hedge defense. A lot of centers last year in the combat would complain like, oh, do I chase for boards or do I step up? Like, honestly, I hate that. It's not that black and white. Like, 
it's not a zero sum game where you do A and then you can't do B and then you do B, you can't do A. Sure, sure. To many players, maybe it is like that, but that's just a sign of the player not being good enough. As a center, you have to do both constantly at every position, every possession, and you have to play hedge defense as required of you. If you have to show and deny, you show and deny. But it's not one option. You have to guard everything at once. You always have to stay at that space where you're stopping the shot and you're stopping the roll, and you can get a steal, and you or you can roll back and get a chase down from behind and get a block, or you can go back and get a contest. That's your job as a center. Don't tell me if you do one, you can't do the other. That's like a point guard telling me, if I dribble, I can't shoot. You have to dribble and shoot and pass. So centers, please don't. Don't, don't ever bring that up. Don't be like, oh, I gotta step up or I, I can't do the other if I do this. Then you, you can't tell me that because look at player A and player B, they were doing both. See the steal number, see the rebound number, see the assist number, see the scoring number. They were doing everything correct. And you know that because their DRTG is insane at 99.6 and 98.8. Like, if you look at the differential between the ORTG and DRTG, it's like 50 something. That means like these two players, if they're on the court, like if they're on your team or against you, every 100 possessions you play with them or against them, they will give you a plus and minus of 50. 50. A plus minus of 50. That's why these guys winning percentage was like 80 and 86% because they were lock up on defensive end. Why? Because they clean up the boards and they clean up the hedge. They clean up everything and that's what a great center does, right? Like the league team I work with, my guy Plondo, all 2K league player. That's what he does. He passes, he plays hedge defense, he grabs boards, he cleans up, he sets great screens. That's what you got to do. And as you can tell from player A and player B stat lines, that's what people were able to do. So don't complain. That's what the standard is. You want to be in the 2K league, you want to be a top two player. This is the standard. This is the standard. Like this is not minimum. Like this is just how you have to be. Sorry, this is minimum. This is not maximum. This is minimum. This is what is required of you to make it. And so don't think otherwise. So if you don't understand, leave answers in the comments below. Center spot is something that's dear to me and like you have to play it well like this that th like these two that line that's a great center an old rtg and drtg differential of 50 and a drtg of sub 100 now that's a baller that's a baller right that's what you gotta be if you want to make it in as a center all right so as always thanks for coming by shout out to bucks gaming for the sponsorship once again if you got questions leave it in the comment section and i'll speak to you guys again with the combine coming up and I'll speak to you guys very, very soon.